Hey everybody, this is John from Lee Personal Fitness. I wanna break down with you guys kind of how we would create a program and things that we're thinking about. And I call it like covering all your bases. So pretty much these are all my bases and depending on athletes, we add stuff like that with them. But pretty much, you know, as humans, we need to be doing s certain things to make sure that we're balanced and we're doing everything, you know, covering all of our bases, making sure that, you know, that we aren't creating you know, imbalances on, on, you know, on purpose, you know, or, you know, you're not, you know, focusing on one spot more than the other, you know, now, depending on the person, obviously, if they're like, hey, I really want to get better at pressing, their training is going to be a little bit more focused towards certain things. But even in our program, we still keep them certain things in, because we believe that you should be well rounded and, and have those things it just won't be as big of a focus. So, Pretty much when I'm creating a program and I'm thinking about exercises that I need to put into somebody's program, when I'm like say doing, like we do three days of strength training in our facility, so I break all of these movements up into three days or do them multiple times depending on how difficult they are on your body, but pretty much I'll say, all right, well everyone needs to do a horizontal press, okay, and a horizontal pull. Now, vertical press and vertical pull, everyone's going to do a vertical pull. Depending on the person, depending on their shoulder health, we might limit or change how they do a press, but for the most part, we would like people to press overhead in a safe way. We're going to do a hip dominant move or a hip hinge, which is pretty much like them hip, hip hinging back, usually picking something up off the ground, so say a deadlift pattern. Um, a bilateral quad dominant, which would be like a squat pattern where they're going to say, I'm going to squat up and down, chest is up. The unilateral quad dominant, which would be like a single leg, some people call them split stance, whatever it is, but pretty much like say a lunge or a split squat or step up onto a box. Okay. Posterior chain, we can break up into a ton of things. We like doing direct calf work. Okay. We like to do direct um, hamstring work, direct, direct glute work. We do, say, supermans for people's low backs to get them stronger. We do a lot of um, any, pretty much anything on the back side of their body. We do a ton of band pull-aparts to build up people's strength in their upper back. With core training, you can break this up into four different ways. We have isometric holds where, like, say, like up for a plank, for example. So we're holding, okay, what I call home base where we're not twisting. We're sitting there just like we're standing, okay, and holding a plank. Okay, we have anti-rotation. Maybe I grab a band and I pull it away, but I don't let me twist. I hold it right here. Okay, we have flexion, which is where we're squeezing and crunching, what people will know like as crunches or sit-ups. Um, and then extension, say, is on your back and we're going to extend back and up. So your core needs to be worked in these different ways. Now, a lot of people focus on, say, flexion and isometric holds because it's just what they know. You know, but what we, a, a big one that people don't do is anti-rotation, which gives you huge gains in, in your core strength. And then extension helps keep your, your, your core healthy because your core, you know, is from the front all the way to the back. So we have to kind of develop all of those things. Now, we call these chaos, but it's like a, a carry, drag, or push. So like stuff with, you know, doing farmer carries where you're just grabbing, say, like, you know, even like a, some places have wheelbarrows or weights and we're going to walk with them, okay? We're going to drag a sled. We're going to push a sled, okay? We're going to carry, you know, a, kind of an awkward object or say like carry like a med ball. And those create, you know, uh, core strength and grip strength and just total body conditioning in a way that you can't really kind of mimic in like, say, a press or a pull. Um, and then our mobility, this is probably one thing that helps people the most feel better. And they don't realize that until they start doing it. Now, we do the common areas. So there's upper cross syndrome, lower cross syndrome. So upper cross syndrome means that, you know, shoulders are rounded kind of forward. Your pecs are tight. You get pulled forward. You can't really open up, you know, because when we sit, we're all kind of slouching and we all, nobody really has good posture. So we're trying to open people up. So we do a lot of mobility, whether it's in our warm ups um, or directly with specific movements. Like if you're, if you're pressing, we would do, say, you know, band pull parts after, which is going to help kind of open up their chest and then also develop their upper back, give them some good um, shoulder strength. Lower cross syndrome, you can think of like people call it the duck butt, where like their stomach's out and their back's like that. Hip flexors are tight, pulls you in like this, your back goes into extension. So we would work on things to get them the opposite way, teaching them keeping core tight, you know, stretching out their hip flexors, their psoas, um, their hips. 
but then also, you know, we create a personalized program for everybody in the facility. So specific to that person, somebody may need more mobility work with sp sp some specific part of their body, and we help them with that. Now, when it comes to the athletes, we do all of this, and then you do more. So with them, we like to do med ball throws, which really we do a lot of rotational throws with them. Um, we do a lot of punches because we have a, a wall, a cement wall that you can actually throw the weight at, which uh, translates to a lot of athletes, whether they're shooting with a stick um, or if they're kicking where they have rotation and they don't, you know, like you don't think of that rotation with their upper body, but it also trains their lower body. Um, Olympic lifts, so whether it be with a dumbbell or a barbell, um, barbells we would really only kind of do like cleans with, with our athletes and it depends on where they're going and what, how much time we have with them. Um, but we like to do the dumbbell ones, they're a little bit easier to coach. Um, we have them jump and do plyometrics. So jumping would just be like them squatting down, jumping onto a box. Plyometrics is them landing and then reacting and then jumping again from that. Um, those, uh, you can think of a million different ways to do that. And then sprints, um, where we have them actually running or practicing change of direction or acceleration tactics. Now, this is kind of like when I'm creating a program, I'm like, all right, well, I got to make sure that, you know, hey, Monday is a hip dominant, you know, that's our main lift. But then I also want to do a unilateral quad dominant and go really heavy. And we'll, we'll do unilateral quad dominant work later in the week, but it's not gonna be as big of a, I guess, a focus as it would be on this day, but we're still kind of covering the bases, making sure that you're not just doing things once a week. But this is kind of the, the specifics of, of uh, what we're gonna put in exercise wise. Now, on the back here we have, then you have to create the training variables, okay? The training variables are dependent on, okay, so we have our exercise selection, from the back, you know, or, or the movement patterns that we need to do. Now we have to add in all like the kind of the, the, the gritty or the, the, the nerdy stuff. So we'll say, all right, volume is like sets and reps. How many reps and sets of the, every exercise do we need to do? Depending on how, I guess, stressful a movement can be, we, we might make that very high uh, sets, but low, but low uh, reps. You might flip it the other way, it depends on what it is. You can control the tempo. How slow are we going through the movement? Are we, are we going like a 10 seconds, 10 seconds up? You know, are we going up as fast as we can? You know, the exercise selection. So if I say, hey, we're gonna do a hip dominant movement, but this week we're gonna do uh, kettlebell deadlifts where you have one kettlebell, we're gonna deadlift up and down. And then next week, say we're gonna go to trap bar deadlifts. So deciding, hey, like equipment wise, what do we have? That's, these two are gonna be the most difficult um, things to program with our people, but these kind of make or break, the exercise selection makes or breaks if somebody is gonna have a lot of success with the program or they're not. So based off the person, that's where the personalization comes in where you say, you know what, um, this movement is good for most people, but for you, I want you to do it this little different way. You know, instead of say, uh, you know, being a little bit more quad dominant in our, in our say, trap bar deadlift, I want you to hip hinge more because you have some knee pain and that's gonna help you get out of the knee pain but still have you deadlifting. So that's where that, this comes into where you have to have experience and know what you're doing depending on the person creating programs for them. Equipment selection, what do you have? Where is it gonna happen? Angle of the movement, say if you have shoulder pain, but you still wanna press, well we can do floor presses, but we can only go you know, elbows to the ground and press back up, whereas if we did a barbell press with you and you went all the way back, you'd have some shoulder pain. So we can change the angle of the movement, but we can also change you know, just the stimulus of, oh, we're gonna do an incline press versus say a flat bench press. The load, how heavy do you want them to go in, in the movement, the range of motion, okay, of how deep we want them to go you know, uh, we might only want them to do half reps. We might want them to go all the way down to the ground. Depends on what we want them to do. How long is the rest period? This one I keep pretty much up to the person training. Based off of how they're training, okay, how um, long do they need, you know, to keep going. We have a timer that kind of goes to kind of keep people on track so they're pushing, but I'm not too worried about that. But it is an option when doing it. Now, frequency, how often are they gonna do the movement, okay? throughout the week, you know, are you gonna say, hey, I want you pressing twice a week if we wanna get our presses up? Um, density, like how often or how much work, you know, are we doing, you know, in a specific amount of time? 
the RPE is the rate of perceived exertion. So I might say, say one out of 10, one being the easiest, 10 being the hardest. You know, I might want people, some people will go like, well, I don't know what I can do, you know, you know, squats for, I don't, I don't know how much I can do for five reps. We might say, hey, do a, an RPE of say seven, which would be like a seven out of 10. That was like, you know, very difficult, but you know what the difference between the seven and an eight is. Okay, advanced protocols are when we say add chains or bands to them. We don't have chains, we don't really get into that. Um, but the bands we use a lot, you know, that can be either making it easier in certain parts of the lift or, or much more difficult in part of the lifts. Um, their mindset going into, say, the training. You know, if somebody comes in and they're wiped out and I created all this programming based off this, but they're tired, it's like, all right, well then your mindset's gonna dictate what, how we're gonna program this today's exercise. Your workout partner, some people just push harder if they're with somebody who is at the same or higher than them. Um, or, you know, depending on, say they have, say they wanted to go a little bit slower, they might pick somebody that's gonna be at a slower pace. It depends. And then music, the last one, which people don't think about, but the, you know, if you're, you, you don't wanna to listen to Earth, Wind and Fire when you're trying to you know, lift a heavy weight as, as much as you've ever lifted before, you know, you're gonna pick very different music depending on what we're doing. If you have a faster paced uh, program, maybe you want the, the pace to be a little bit faster than music. So there's a lot of things that go into this, but also one thing that I didn't add in this is fun. You know, like we, we can make exercise terrible. And we don't want that to be that. We don't want it to be a punishment. So we try to make it, you know, um, where you're kind of doing the things that you need to do, which sometimes aren't that fun, but we make it in a way that it's fun. So like, I'm not gonna put three exercises together that are like the hardest movements ever because you're just gonna be like, oh, I don't wanna do this. So we'll break it up and change it to where like, hey, I like this one movement, I like this mobility exercise, but then I'm gonna have a harder movement um, following that. So this kind of gives you guys a breakdown of, what the thought process and what we're focusing on when we're creating a program and all of these things come you know it, it it's, it's all one big gray area of like it depends you know so based off all our people though if you're a human these are all things that we need to think or be you know uh, think about when we're creating one so if you guys have any questions um, on this please feel to reach out and i hope this helped